Hey, welcome back to the big board. So we're looking at, uh, we're looking at, uh, I've lost my train of thought, AGC, Army Group Center, 3W, Masahiro uh, Yamazaki design. Nice rule book, great map, great counters, etc. Let's have a look at some of the game systems. We've discussed combat already. And we've talked about the fact that the game turns are 12 hours long and the hexes are, I think I said, six miles or 10 kilometers or thereabouts. Is that about right? Yeah, six and a quarter miles and 10 kilometers uh, in size. And we're dealing with AGC's invasion into Russia, in particular the Belarus area north of the Pripyat marshes. So that's the context. Movement is interesting in this game because, uh, and, and it's also disconcerting and, and makes me double take every time I go to move a unit. With a foot unit, moving in the clear, I pay three movement points of, assuming I'm in mobile offense mode, of eight available. So if, in, uh, if I'm in mobile offense mode, I can move two and a half hexes a turn. If I'm in clear terrain and motorized, and I've got the same mobile offense mode, right? I can move eight hexes. So I'm moving a massive amount further, <laughs> right? Now, if I get on a road, sure, I can move two hexes, uh, two movement points per hex. So that's gonna allow me to move four hexes. These guys are gonna double the movement and move eight. All right, here we had a eight to two and a half difference, which is more than double. And here we have a, a two to one difference. Interesting, railroads don't really help anybody. It's cheaper to move motorized through woods than it is to move foot through woods. It's cheaper to move uh, uh, motorized through swamp than it is to move through, uh, uh, use foot through that same terrain. So this, this is just odd to me. Uh, it's obviously, I like the way that it's plus two to get across a river, but it's only, and it's plus four for armor. And then with entrenchments, then there's this, uh, you know, it's cheaper to move the troops through entrenchments than it is to move uh, armor through entrenchments. Um, you know, I can see, I can see that, <clears throat> I suppose. So this is a disconcerting and uh, disruptive um, TEC, I guess, in that I'm always double checking my movement because I'll go to I'll go to move through the woods and I'll go it's uh, you know two for these guys and three for these guys. I just I kind of get all ass about. So kind of funky there. These modes are determined in a unusual at an unusual time in the game as well. In the game sequence, we do the air superiority phase. We place air interdiction air, and air assault units on the map. Then we do weather. Then we do the, and weather impacts the range of the effect of the aircraft that are put on the map. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, then we go through the mode changing exercise and you've got to be in command range. So for the Germans, it's six hexes and for the, for the uh, Soviets, it's four. And uh, that can be problematic because you're rolling to make, to make the change. And then I guess you're only rolling, but here's the, the neat benefit, I guess, you're only rolling once now to make the mode change. If you were listening to the previous video, we talked about how I made some errors with the mode changing, thinking it was per unit when actual fact modes are per core. Uh, so per, per this, these formations, right? You can't see. Let's move this down. Here's Fourth Army here, for instance, right? So I can, I roll for the Seventh Corps, and all of these units in the Seventh Corps will uh, take on the mode that I choose for the HQ if the roll for the HQ is successful, and we go across the board, assuming they're in range. Now, of course, with these disparate movement rates, you got to start making some choices about changing mode, being in supply, being isolated, all those types of things or achieving the hard driving objective objectives that the uh, that the, the access player has or the German player has. So that that can cause some uh, some choices and some concerns there. And that's a nice 
a little dichotomy that you'll need to think about as you're playing the game. Um, particularly if you're playing it correctly, as I was not earlier on. So, with that, that's movement, a little bit about modes, a little bit about uh, mode changing in terms of being in, in range. We've talked about combat previously. The air war is interesting. It's pretty simple. The air war has uh, a couple of counters. Soviets start up fairly uh, battered. Uh, this combat factor of five attacks this defense factor of one, and it's a differential based model, so it goes on a plus, so it goes to the plus four column. You roll a die, and you'll get a result. That result will either be an abort or it will be a uh, hit and this unit because it's on its flip side would then die But before it does die it's going to get to fight back and it's going to fight back at one versus four Which would be a minus three attack and he has no chance of hitting uh, If it was a minus two he has one chance in ten of hitting. It's a d10 based system for combat results, which is kind of nice So then what happens is after that's all taken care of uh, the air force then can place ground assault units which fulfill two two needs with the range of three and the strength of three uh, this uh, blankets the map for three hexes away from this unit in all directions with a, basically an interdiction zone and what that's going to do is provide a uh, or force the any enemy unit that moves into that area to make an interdiction role which may possibly disrupt them and then change their mode uh, may force a mode change to disrupt it which is a bad thing uh, secondly the combat value of the unit and of any other air units that are in the in the zone uh, and are within range of a given combat that's about to occur they may uh, add that die that number to the casualty check roll as a result of the combat. So you go through the exercise of working out the combat result and you'll get uh, a casualty check result and you will add three to that die roll. So if I have to achieve a four to take a casualty and I get a casualty check with no other modifiers, this one would be, uh, I would, I would roll the die and if I roll the zero, I would be fine. If I roll a one or higher, I'm gonna take a casualty in transport mode. But if I'm in uh, prepared offense mode and I have to take a casualty check, whether as a defender or the attacker, I'm going to take seven, I'm gonna need seven uh, to take that casualty and if I roll, a uh, six or a, a roll of five or whatever the case may be and I add three to it, I'll go over and take a loss. But if I roll a you know, zero, one, two, three, or four, uh, sorry, three, zero, one, two, or three, then I'll be okay and I won't take a loss. So that's how that works. And here's a stand in defense mode. Uh, you would need to roll a six. If I roll a six or higher net of DRMs, you'll have a negative result and you'll, you'll take a, a loss. So that's that would be how that's how the air war air war works. Uh, there are some supply rules, but it really is uh, limiting you in terms of what you're allowed to do with modes and all that sort of fun stuff. So you can't if you're if you, once you become disrupted, it's very difficult to uh, execute on making mode changes and all this sort of fun stuff. You're, you're not allowed to do that, and that's going to drive drive how that's going to drive the uh your ability to defend and attack so that's it in a nutshell it's a pretty straightforward game the game only runs from june 22 through june 28 so it's a 14 game turn long scenario really exploring the the battering that the soviets took over the course of those six or seven days uh, six days to be precise and what, like I said, interesting stuff. We're still coming to grips with it. We made a few little errors here and there, and we're uh, we're now uh, deeping, uh, digging into the second half of the second turn, and it's going to be the Soviets' opportunity to move their forces. Look forward to catching up with you soon. We'll talk a little bit more about this game. 
It's the uh, Home Group Center from uh, 3W. Ciao.